Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. Welcome to the PK Young Middle School Admissions Information Session. We're really happy to have you here uh, this evening with us to learn a little bit more about our school and the program for our middle school students. To get us started tonight, uh, I'd like to make a couple of introductions. Uh, my name is Julie Henderson, and I'm the Communications Director at PK Young. And with me here tonight is Dr. Ashley Pennypacker Hill and she is the Director of our Student and Family Services. Ms. Madison, Madison Schmidt is our School Counselor uh, for our students in sixth, seventh, and eighth grades. Fabiana Zrebi is our Admissions Coordinator. Uh, many of you may know Fabiana already, or you may come to know her very well uh, as you look at applying to PK Young. To get started, I want to talk a little bit uh, about uh, PK uh, to give you just a general overview uh, with some important information about our school. And then we'll go into some more detail a little bit uh, later on and you'll hear from all of us tonight. So one of the first and most important things about PK Young is that we are a public school. And we are known uh, as a public school of choice. And what that means is that we're like any other public school, except that people like you have the opportunity to choose to come to PK Young. We are also known as a one school school district. And what that means is that um, we are our own district. And um, just as a point of clarification, that we are not part of the uh, Alachua County School District. And usually for families, that kind of manifests in in dates that are a little bit different or uh, curriculum and programming that looks a little bit different and sometimes even around things like hurricane days or when we return to school those kinds of things just tend to be a little bit different. Uh, another really important thing to us and something that we benefit from greatly in many aspects of our school life is that we are affiliated with the University of Florida and in fact, P.K. Young was established in Norman Hall in the University of Florida's College of Education uh, in 1934. So we are a pretty old school when it comes down to it. Uh, we serve students on our campus from kindergarten through 12th grade. And like you see here in this picture, that just gives a lot of opportunities for students to en engage cross grade level, cross division, and we have some really wonderful relationships that develop between our students and in our school community uh, as a result of the multi-age uh, community that we serve. In this picture here, I think what you see is a statistics class, which is a high school class. And then you have, I think those guys are third graders at the time um, who are working together with the statistics uh, students who have worked on developing some games for them using their class knowledge to help entertain and teach a little bit of math to the younger students. We also have things like a homecoming parade um, where we have our kindergartners who um, wear costumes and march in the parade and middle school football teams that have floats and then the prom king and prom queen and, and everybody in between that get to participate in that really rich cross community experience. Another really important thing about PK is that our community is selected by lottery. Uh, so people like you submit an application and those applications go into, I guess, a pot or different pots. Um, and those pots are really determined by the demographics of the state of Florida. And that's a bit of a mouthful. Uh, so our student community is um, defined because we are a developmental research school and we are required to reflect the demographics of the state. And so that's both ethnically and socioeconomically. So if you take a look at this picture right here, you have a really wonderful diverse community of students. And that's largely what our school community looks like across the whole school um, and within each grade level and in classes that our students come from all different uh, backgrounds. Um, and that's one of the things that I think a lot of our graduates talk about as one of the richest and most wonderful things of their experience 
at PK Young. I'm going to ask Ashley to talk a little bit more in depth about um, our approach to education being a whole child approach. And Ashley can really talk about um, how that manifests in the middle school program. Yeah, thanks, Julie. So as we all know, middle school is a time where um, students are not necessarily big kids yet but they're not necessarily little kids yet. It really is that middle time. And so at PK in middle school, um, we want to honor that and help the, our students in this time of their life be able to figure out who they are, figure out who they wanna be, um, and, and really lean into that middle time in their K-12 career. Um, where we don't necessarily force their hand in choosing a track or um, deciding right now that you're going to do technology for all of middle school. We actually want you to explore lots of different things at PK. So then when you do transition to high school and then when you transition to being an adult, um, you have had an opportunity in our middle grades program to experience lots of different things um, that you maybe didn't even know that you were interested in. Um, so really trying to step back and honor students as humans and not necessarily as um, a specific track or interest. Now, with that being said, we do have some students who are really interested in certain things and we wanna meet them where they're at as well. Um, so really just trying to honor who they are as middle grade students um, and not, not make them grow up too fast because as we all know too, um, you can grow up too fast sometimes these days and, and we don't wanna do that. And so we honor that in our middle grades program at PK. Thanks, Ash. I think speaking about like providing loads of opportunities uh, for students. We definitely do that across the board from kindergarten through 12th grade, but Ashley spoke really beautifully to how important that is in the middle grades, that opportunities really do abound at PK for students to, to choose and experience different things. And what we offer for them are rigorous academics in all disciplines. We give them the opportunity to experience visual arts, performing arts, athletics, extracurricular activities, and we'll definitely be sharing more information about all those aspects in just a little bit. Importantly for us, we do have a very significant mission at PK as the Developmental Research School, and that is to design, test, and share innovations in K-12 education through serving our diverse student community. Our goals at PK are really to provide the best school experience for the students on our campus. And then in doing that, sharing what we learn with schools and teachers locally, nationally, and growingly, we, we have um, opportunities to share what we learn about teaching and learning with uh, communities all around the world. I think for our students and families and even for our staff and faculty, we are a small school, uh, but we offer big opportunities for the students and families that we serve. We're gonna make a transition where, we, where I mentioned we would talk more uh, about the program. And so I'm going to invite Madison uh, to share a little bit more information with us about our program for middle schoolers. Thanks, Julie. So when taking a look at our middle school program and looking at the academics, so we do have a rigorous curriculum here. We offer a lot of opportunities academically as well for our students. So that's for our literacy-based courses. That includes our ELA, our history courses, we also offer an inquiry-based science program as well. 
And our math is programmed out throughout middle school where it works its way up into Algebra 1 Honors, which is a high school credit course for middle school students to take in their eighth grade year. So it does work them up to have those advantages to really get a jump start into some of those graduation requirements that they will have to accomplish in high school they're able to receive in, in middle school for mathematics, as well as some elective opportunities as well that we offer. Our one-to-one -one devices, so each student has re received a Chromebook and that really has been a blessing. One during pandemic school, that's been a huge, huge blessing. But also we really integrate technology like before the pandemic school was a thing. Um, Canvas is our blended learning platform that our curriculum is embedded in. So this is before um, we were doing remote learning and continued our curriculum, the homework, the lectures, it's all embedded online for school, for our students to have access to wherever they are. This also gives advantages into high school um, where students don't have to take any online courses as part of their graduation requirement. Um, this satisfies that requirement. So there's no need to take FOBS courses as well. And speaking of high school, I know we're here for middle school, but we hope to keep you through high school. So it's good to look onward as well. Um, the opportunities don't stop. Um, we offer AP courses in all of our disciplines, honors level courses throughout high school. You can take a look at this at our class pages online. And we also, through our partnerships with UF, and having Santa Fe in the Gainesville area, dual enrollment is available to our juniors and seniors as well. Now zooming back in a little bit, our day-to-day -day schedule and what that looks like. So eight to 2.30 is our time period of the school day for Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Our Wednesday does have an early release time. So it's eight to 1.30 and our faculty engaged in professional learning for the last half of the day or the later portion of the day. And we're on this new thing this year, it's a block schedule. This is our first year shift into it, um, where students, what that means for block schedule is that they're in four classes each semester. So four classes in the fall and four classes in the spring. So each day they'll have four periods, the same classes each, Day, and it might shift then in the spring, their schedule would look different in the springtime. The breakdown of those class periods also looks a little different each day. So they are longer on our extended day, they're 85 minutes long, and it just shortens up a little bit on Wednesdays where they're 65 minutes. This block schedule, one reason why we shifted to it is really, it really allows us for flexibility to adapt to the students' needs um, for advancement, as well as there's opportunities for remediation during school. So not, not always like summer remediation. Um, there's opportunities to have that throughout the school year, as well as for advancement as well. Now to our electives. So our exploratory courses is how we refer to them in middle school. Um, so we have a wealth of options. So our band and performing arts courses are the ones that students can elect into. They can say, I know I love band. I wanna play the tuba and I want Mr. Mursky to be my teacher and I wanna develop that <laughs> skill set." Same thing with performing arts. They can elect to, to be um, in that area. But as uh, Dr. Penny Packer Hill said, um, we do offer a wheel where they can explore a range of other opportunities here. So computer design, digital design, engineering, visual arts, across middle school, they would have the opportunity to take all of those courses. And then moving on into their eighth grade year, they get to say, I know what I want. I really would love to be in computer science. And they get to have those preferences and have the schedule built around their preferences. Looking into high school, some more opportunities open up that just don't fit into our program in middle school, like ceramics, um, again, computer science, digital media, engineering, marine science, PE, rock band, theater. The opportunities don't really stop. 
And if you really want to dive in um, more to really get a breakdown of the course descriptions and really see what each class is made of, um, we do have a lot more information on our middle school course guide that can be found under ac academics and it's listed here circled on the web page. It's called course guide for middle school. It shifts a little bit each year, but the one for this year is posted. And I think we're going to transition and Ashley is going to talk a little bit um, to give you some answers to a did you know question. All right, so. Um, we want to just highlight some awards and recognitions that we're proud of. So we have been an A school um, for the state of Florida since 2002. So that's a bit of time there. Um, the Washington Post has called us the most challenging high schools in 2016. We made that list. The US News and World Report in 2017 gave us a gold and in 2018 gave us a silver and in 2019 um, called, we made the best high school list. And in 2020, we made the best high school list as well. And our graduation rate is really high. For last year, we were at 99%. Um, we take that um, as an honor. We wanna make sure that every student leaves PK Young with a diploma. Um, and so moving on from that, looking a little bit um, at our class of 2020, so our people that graduated last year, um, we are very proud of what our students achieved. So for our last group of seniors, that, which is the class of 2020, which was 107 graduates, so you can see it's pretty small, um, they earned $1.9 million in scholarships. And they were accepted to 63 different colleges. Um, we also had students who were career ready and they left PK with concrete plans for their future as well. And so additionally, we also had seven seniors who had athletic scholarships. Um, so well-rounded people that we are graduating here. If you want to look more into um, more information about annual newsletters and just more notable information about each one of our school years, you can go to our website and under the information tab, um, you can find policies and publications on our web and you can look more into that if that's something that you're interested in. Another thing that um, is, is a bit different and unique to PK than maybe some other middle schools in town are the partnerships that we've developed. So we have very close partnerships with the University of Florida, obviously being the developmental research school uh, for the University of Florida. Um, particularly at UF, we have significant partnerships with the school psychology department and uh, mechanical and aerospace engineering, as well as robotics and teacher interns. We have interns from um, University of Florida, not just from the College of Education, but from actually all across UF. Um, obviously we are significant partners with the College of Education and we've also been partnering, partnering with the Florida Museum of Natural History as well. We're also a member of the Northeast Florida Educational Consortium. You'll hear that referred to as NEFEC, um, which is other school districts that are small like ours. And so we connect in with them. Um, we're partners with Project Lead the Way, which is an engineering um, partnership, helps us with our project-based learning curriculum. We also have developed uh, several international partnerships. Julie helps lead that uh, many times. Um, specifically, we have a partnership with the Nanjing Experimental School, International School, and Julie actually takes students uh, from PK over to China every few years. And then we have students um, from that Nanjing School come back and come stay with our families and come to school at PK as well. Um, we have partnered with uh, people from Slovakia and India, and um, it's, it's quite amazing our international partnerships that we get to engage with. And then most recently, we have developed 
quite a strong partnership with River Phoenix Center for Peace Building. They are helping us design restorative practices at PK Young. Um, and it's been amazing. So we are very, very lucky to be able to um, engage in all of these partnerships. So uh, in addition to partnering with all of these outside groups that I mentioned, we also have strong internal uh, partnerships with the people that work here at PK. And we have partnerships obviously with our students and families. So in student and family services, we provide services that focus on helping students navigate school. Um, and this can be through mental health, physical health, overall well-being, um, academic support, families that are in transition, and so much more. Um, also in our student family services department, um, we have our exceptional student education department. And so sometimes people think, well, PK doesn't have ESE, which is exceptional student education, which is not true. We actually do. Um, we have many students with specific learning disabilities in reading, math, and writing, um, students with autism, students with speech and language impairments, ADHD, um, many other things. Um, so we do have students with IEPs and 504 accommodation plans. And uh, we also provide supports to students who are gifted, so students who have educational plans or EPs. Um, the, the slight difference um, in terms of exceptional student education at PK um, versus some other schools in town is that we provide all of these supports through an inclusive model. So this means that um, you are, as a student, you are fully included into the general education classroom at all times. Um, we don't have separate gifted classrooms or a gifted magnet or a separate classroom if you're a student with a disability that you go to a self-contained classroom. Um, that's not the way that we do our ESE program. Everybody is fully included in the general education classroom. And basically in student family services, you tell us what you need and we work to find a way to help you. And we're really proud of that at PK. I'm gonna to transition to Madison to speak a little bit more about school counseling. My apology is muted here. <laughs> so for school counseling, um, there's a range of services that we provide. So of course, academic advisement so this goes from grade level presentations, workshops, family nights, consulting with families. That's a partnership I love to engage in. Um, really just making sure that students are successful in the classrooms. And so working with the teachers and seeing where it, where it makes sense for me to fit in in the role to provide supports for students um, for academic advisement. And for planning that out, right? So it doesn't just start with end in one grade, planning that out into the future. That's one of the things that I love of being at a K-12 school is the transitionary periods during the same school, the handoff we're able to do into our high school counselors who know already maybe their interests because they were able to meet with the eighth graders their eighth grade year and really transition them into that high school and, and have had those conversations at a, at a deeper, in a deeper way. We also host family nights around navigating high school and we do go into the classrooms and I've been into the classrooms as well when we talk about those academic advising plans and personalizing that for the students for the following year. And of course, we cannot forget about the social emotional needs of students. Um, I work with students individually. I work with students in groups. I work with students in a psychoeducation way where maybe it's a classroom guidance lesson or it's education for all relating to mental health and supports that we can put in place across K-12. Um, that's something that we're really passionate, passionate about is reaching all students. Um, and this year we really have taken on family webinars. So we're here tonight and there's also, you can explore on our website, some other family webinars that we've offered on the student family services portion of the website. We record them so that families, no matter the time, um, can come and watch. It's really important for, for you all to be a part 
of our schooling and for us to have you there. All right, we're going to make a transition to Ashley and she's going to talk a little bit about our athletic program. All right, yeah, because for many middle school students, athletics is really where they shine. And in some middle school programs that aren't connected to a high school like we are, you may not get to have, be engaged in a ton of athletics at the at your middle school. But at PK, we have middle school teams and we also have JV teams and we have varsity teams. And so we have some students in middle school that are actually on the JV team playing against high school aged kids and some middle schoolers that might be on the varsity team, kind of the sky's the limit there. Um, but if you look at these athletic opportunities um, we've got cheerleading, cross country, football, golf, swimming, diving, volleyball, basketball for both boys and girls. Um, cheerleading again, soccer for boys and girls, baseball, softball, tennis, track and field. Um, we have a ton of athletic opportunities. And like I said, middle schoolers can try out for varsity sports, um, which is, is really something that's quite different at PK. And if you want to check out more about that, you can see at the bottom of all these slides, you see it says website, extracurricular, and then athletics. It's kind of like the path where you can find more about athletics. And then if you look at these athletic achievements, um, so it's one thing to have the teams. It's another thing to really kind of be good at it. So in 2018 <laughs> and 2019, you can see that we were district champs in volleyball, golf, boys swimming and diving. Sorry, I'm having to lean in because I can't <laughs> see very well. And then regional runner-ups in girls swimming and diving, regional semifinals, regional finals and basketball. I'm not going to read them all to you, but you can see um, that we actually really do pretty well in terms of athletics. And if you look at 1920, we were district champs in both boys and girls swimming, boys golf, girls soccer, boys basketball. And then we are actually state champs in swimming and um, city meet winners. And you can see again, we've got athletic scholarships that are occurring because athletics for some students is a way um, for them to, it's, that's their lifeline. That's what they really come to school to do. They come to do, they come to do academics too, but athletics is really where they, where they shine. So wanted to make sure that we touched base on athletics. And then again, if you look at the website, you can go and see some more about the athletics. You go to the website, extracurricular, and then you dive into athletics. Now, for some students, athletics isn't their thing, right? Or maybe athletics is their thing, but they also want to still be well-rounded and they want to do other things. Um, we have tons of extracurriculars, and this is actually um, this is kind of like the heartbeat of PK. We really try to get everybody involved in something. If it's not athletics or performing arts or robotics, we just, we want you to find your niche. We want you to find your people. So we offer over 50 different clubs and organizations. And yes, that is 50. It's a lot all the way from um, a Pokemon club and a ping pong <laughs> club uh, to more traditional things, uh, more traditional clubs. But also, even if your student is really into something, um, they can approach a faculty member and start their own club and then gather other students that they want to work together. And we're really open to anything. We just want students to be able to find their way and connect with each other. We also have performing arts, um, which PK Young is very well known for. We, per, we offer spring musical, a fall play, um, band is involved in performing arts. And then like I was talking about before, we have um, a, a lot of international activities. I was talking about before we have this partnership um, in China with a school in China. We have a Costa Rica scholarship um, we have uh, Global Scholar Awards and Middle School Project-Based Learning Class, um, which um, many times these clubs also will go international and they start winning competitions and 
going and flying on planes and going everywhere, maybe not during the pandemic necessarily, but um, competing with uh, against people that are not just in Gainesville. And I think that that's a really great experience for our students. I think to Ashley, I wanted to talk about the Global Scholar Award is particularly interesting because it's a really great combination of student academics as well as extracurricular activities. Mm -hmm. And this Global Scholar Award doesn't require that a student leave the country. And so it's, it's a really comprehensive process mm -hmm. that starts where they can start to develop experiences throughout their academic careers that can become documented. And so that by the time they actually graduate, they are presented, I think, with a cord, um, which, which designates them as a global scholar, which is a, which is a pretty awesome thing. Mm -hmm. And you can find that under extracurricular international activities on the web. Um, it's a fun place to look around. Nice, I didn't even know that, Julie. <laughs> All right, and so now looking towards the future. So like Julie said, we're kind of old. Um, PK is kind of old. And then our buildings were constructed in the 1950s. And so we actually have slowly been uh, redesigning our campus. So phase one was our elementary building, which opened in 2012. And then we're currently in phase two. Um, which is our secondary building. So obviously we're talking about middle school here. And so these middle schoolers um, are going to move into our new secondary building actually in January. So started building this building in October, 2019. Um, the faculty and staff have designed it just like we did with our elementary building and I'm broke sorry. ground, excuse me. Sorry, I just flipped your slide. Oh. That's okay. <laughs> We're back. That's okay. We're yeah. back. Broke ground in uh, October 2019. And like I said, we're moving in. And this, our new building is a sixth through 12th grade building. So middle schoolers will come in this building, but also ninth through 12th, ninth and 10th, 11th, and 12th will also come in as well. And um, you can see these pictures. It's just gorgeous. And there is something about learning and being um, in beautiful places and beautiful places that uh, we've been very deliberate about natural light and um, like I said, windows and colors and we've gotten to choose our furniture. Um, it really does change the way you feel. And we do believe that that then impacts the way you go about your day and the way that you can engage in your learning um, and how space really impacts function. Um, so we're really excited about that. And um, if you wanna read more about it, we've really tried to document our journey. Julie's been amazing about that. So go to the school website, you go under the about tab and you can go into all of our campus revitalization projects. It's actually pretty fascinating to read about. All right, and so now I'm going to pass it over to Miss Fabiana, our fabulous admissions director, and she's going to provide you important tips about applications and admissions and help you avoid hiccups or delays in the process. Correct. Thank you, Ashley. And um, I'm going to be sharing highlights and like Ashley said, key information to make it, the application easier. You can go back, Julie, to the other one. This is the website that when you go to our website, you're gonna go about again and you're gonna click in admissions. And this is the page that you're gonna find. And uh, before I begin giving you the information about the admission process, I want to let you know that all the information is there. Everything that I'm going to be sharing tonight about the admissions process is there. Applications are there, documents, policy, everything can be found in, on the website. Okay, application. When you get your application, please respond to every question that you find on those forms. It's very important that all the, uh, that we get all the answers and that you get 
the whole application completed. The main documents that you have to send with your application is the birth certificate, the transcripts. It's very important that you send the whole academic history of your child. We need to have from kindergarten up to the current grade level that you, your child is in. The discipline report. This is a document that is you're going to find on the admission application that there is one page dedicated to discipline report. This is for the parents to fill out. But in addition to that page, you have to submit a discipline report from the previous school that your child uh, was attending. This can be a discipline report. Other school can call it also behavior letter we need to have that discipline report. And the question that I always get, my child doesn't have any discipline records. It's clean. It's okay. You still have to send a discipline report that says that your child has no records. So it is important that you send that additional paper. Parents, guardian, emails, please. We communicate a lot of information through emails. Don't forget to put the email and your application. And sometimes that Fabiana is really easy to forget. You know, you just happen to overlook it. So be sure to have that um, accurate um, and check the places where it needs to be included because of course it's really important for us to communicate with you. Correct. Checklist. This is your best friend when you're filling out <laughs> PK Young. Don't throw away that page. This is the second page that you will print when you print the whole application. This is the guidance for you to make sure that you're sending all the documents that we need and we require in order to have this application completed and then have it on the system ready for the selection. Uh, I have to let you know that if you have a child with educational services, like Ashley was saying, we take students with different educational services, please make sure that you read uh, carefully the service that your child has because different services have different documents that you need to submit. And it's all here in the checklist. The agreement. Yes, 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 yes. You need to check every box that is there. Three boxes, three agreements. This is a contract that you are letting us know that you are agreeing to this application process. You need to sign it and you need to write the date. Please don't forget, if one check mark is missing, I will have to call you or send you an email. Please complete the agreement of the application. Okay, this is like a summary of what we have been talking about. If the application is incomplete, if that discipline report is missing, if that check little mark is not there, if the educational services of your child is missing one of the required documents, the application will be incomplete and will not be accepted. The checklist is your best friend. Don't forget the discipline report, even though if your child doesn't have any records, ask in the school that your child is currently attending for that discipline report. Make sure you sign the agreement. And when you send the document, this is important, please send the most recent records uh, of your child. Um, I have to get closer to Ashley. Uh, the information, <laughs> yes. If the information that you're sending is not the most recent, PK Young can withdraw the invitation. Sixth grade applications, uh, the deadline is right around the corner. It's December 15. You need to send those applications on time because in January we will be making our selection grade seven and eight, you have until April 15 <clears throat> to, excuse me, to send those applications. Since if you want your child to be in the selection pool for the next school year, grade seven and grade eight have to send the application before April 15. 
Okay, what happened if I don't hear anything from PK Young? No emails, no letters, no invitation. I didn't call you. You may assume that your child was not selected. And if that happened, your application is only active and valid for one school year. In July, you need to send an update application. This is like a small version of the original. You need to send that application. Again, you need to answer all the questions with the updated information, email addresses, phone numbers have to be uh, the, the most current ones. And you need to send the last report card, last school year report card. And yes, you need to send again that discipline report from the school. And that document, the annual update document is also found on the admissions page on the website. There's really just a short list of packets of information sort of right at the very top of the page. So it's not too buried. Um, so that if you're really interested in looking at the application or if you're in a situation where you need to make an annual update that's there, our, our admissions policy um, is also included on that page for you to be able to review as you're, as you're looking at um, applying for PK Young. Correct. And, and there it is. This is the website, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the you're gonna go about you're gonna go to admissions a circle there and then you're gonna find the first page that when i began my presentation in that page you're gonna find different links with all the application the original application update application policy frequently asked questions and then yeah. you're gonna have all the deadlines are there with the information that you need to send us uh, it is very important that if you have any question, you can send an email to admissions at VK Young, and I will be able to answer as much as I can to help you to go through the process because we want you to apply. Send your application, send the documents. If you have any question, a document is missing, we help you through the process. We need to have your application. Some uh, parents ask me, oh, if I was not selected, I have to wait the whole year. It could happen that we call you at the beginning of the school year, in the middle of the school year, because families moved, plans change. And then if we have a spot available and your child have a complete application on the system, <laughs> maybe you are the lucky one. And then this is a lottery system, correct? But you can be the one with the demographics that we are looking for. And this is the one that is gonna be selected. That's what is so important that you update your application every year and that you update the emails and the phone numbers because this is how we're gonna reach. And now... Yeah, that's, and also just um, again, because I'm the person who maintains the website, of course, so I continually drive people back there. Um, but on the admissions page, you'll also find uh, the admissions email address uh, where you can submit questions as well. So I, I think the admissions page is your friend um, in, in collecting contact information and all the information about the admissions process. And now we actually have some uh, questions that have been submitted and I thank everyone for their patience. I should have mentioned earlier that we would hold questions uh, to the end and then, and then address them. Uh, with everyone. Um, one of the first questions was, would you all please slowly explain exactly what is needed for the application and what exact documents are needed and where and how you apply? I think by this stage, Fabiana went through the process. Um, and if you look at that checklist that she says is your friend, that will definitely help you um, walk through that application process. Of course, we are here. There is an email address that you can um, contact. Um, and like Fabiana said, she's very, very eager to help you um, get your applications um, situated and submitted to PK. Um, I want to add something, Julie, since yeah. we have so many families and the diversity of Gainesville is big. I love it. We have families from everywhere. We have the university also like families moving. Uh, uh, if you have questions, you can send them by email. You can call me. You can 
come to the office, main office. I can be reached out. I can go and see you. Also, if you speak Spanish and you have some difficulties with the English application, I can go through the process. I speak Spanish as my first language. And if you speak Portuguese, I can also help you too. And uh, uh, we really want you here. We love the diversity. Do not find that because of the language barrier, you're gonna have difficulties. We help you through the process and we want everybody in PK Young. So send your application. As uh, Julie just said, she is wonderful keeping all the information on the website. You can find mostly of the information on the website, but I know that sometimes it's very specific details about homeschooling or about moving, or I don't have this document of the school closed and I cannot find, I help you uh, to go through that process and I help you to explain to you what you need to send for us to complete that package and to make it through uh, and complete. Great, thanks. And then we have, um, there are two questions here about performing arts um, and auditions. Fabiana, are you able to speak to those? Okay. We have shifted away from doing auditions for our performing arts program. So any student can be interested and it's not up to that one day audition. They can experience performing arts as part of our program. Awesome, thank you. Then another question I have here says, if you have one sibling that is advanced and one that has a 504 plan, will this challenge their chances of acceptance? Not at all. Not at all. The applications and the system doesn't communicate. Everybody have the same chance. Everybody have the same opportunity. Uh, what I uh, ask the parents is that when they send an update and the sibling have been already in PK Young for one school year, please write it down at the end of the page. You have the opportunity to write if the, you have a sibling already in PK Young, but educational services doesn't uh, slow the process or keep you out uh, from opportunities to get into PK Young. Actually, you can add some to this too. Yeah, um, having one child that's advanced and one having a 504 is fabulous. We love all of those types of students. So just having a 504 plan is not going to get become a challenge or um, having a student who's not advanced. Um, no, definitely. We want to accept everybody. Great. Then a question about whether or not the deadline for applications can be extended uh, from a family that uh, is just learning about the school and the deadline. Okay, so far all the deadlines, any of them haven't passed yet. So send your applications. And if there is a case that, oh, I was late, I didn't get to get the information on time, send your application anyway, because we process all the application and if we're close to a selection and the application come in, we make sure that we include that application in the selection pool as long as it's complete. The application needs to be complete. So then another question about are the transcripts meant to be digital? Mm, digital, not really. You need to, uh, transcripts first need to be printed because we do not accept due to UF privacy policy. We cannot accept uh, transcripts via email or attachments. So everything has to be printed and send it to us. Will we be notified that our application has been received and is complete? No, unfortunately. If you want to know the status of an application, I will say that you send an application today. <clears throat> At least you need to wait two weeks to send an email to check the status of an application. Why two weeks? Because we receive an amount of application. They are being processed in the same order that they have received. And then after the application is complete, it goes through the system and it stays in the pool of selection. 
we do not call applicants that uh, parents or family that the application is complete. However, when an application reached the admissions office and I see that some documents are missing or I need information, more information about the applicant, I will call you or I would send an email and I would let you know that the application is incomplete and I would tell you exactly what document you need to send us. But when the application is complete, I do not reach to families and we do not communicate. You need to send an email and you can ask for the status anytime. Great. Then can we submit the application in person? Uh, if so, what are the hour, uh, hours that the office is open? And I think um, you can submit your application in person in a packet and uh, campus is open from 7.30 in the morning until four o'clock in the afternoon. And those can be submitted at the front office. Um, if it's outside of those hours and the gate is open, there's a drop box just outside the front office. It's a big brown box. And I think it has a label on it that says something about admissions applications and you could submit those in there as well. What about, um, I have a question that says, will we find out if we get in? And also, or when will you find out if you get in? And are there any preferences given to children of UF employees? No, we don't give preference to UF employees. It's not a priority in our, in our policy. Uh, the questions, uh, uh, Julie, the first part of the question As was- When do you find out when your students, so if you are accepted, when do you find out? Okay, so the way that we send a notification is via mail. So that's what's so important to write the mailing address on your application. However, there are situations that if we need to reach out faster, we will make a call, giving you the invitation via call, uh, phone call, or we can email you the package. It, it all depends of the needs at that time. But the way to do it, or the way the parents and games will get the invitation is via mail. Yes. The deadline, the notification time, this is what uh, part of the question is. Right. It's on the website. Go to admissions, you're gonna find a big chart there all the deadlines and all the notifications are uh, dates are there on the handy dandy uh, web page yeah. there's a table that, that has yeah. all of those dates for like different grade levels are different um i have a couple of questions about submitting an application and leaving the disciplinary section blank um, without a disciplinary report and fabiana people are able to submit that independently is that accurate yes if yeah. i reach out and then I tell you that something is missing, you can send just the part that is missing, either the page of the discipline report from the admission application or just the discipline report from the school, just make sure that you identify that report. Sometimes those reports don't have the name on the top. Don't forget to write down the name of the applicant. Okay, and then another question about if the students' last schools are out of state, should they, send uh, the transcripts directly to admissions and can they be faxed or do they just include them as mailed in a packet with the application? I prefer parents to reach out to the school directly, get the transcript, print them and send them to us because again, we don't, we're not allowed to receive transcripts via mail or faxes. If the child has to send in, uh, accepted to PK Young, we cannot receive faxes from other schools. Oh, so if they haven't been accepted, then we can't, right. we can't right. receive faxes from other schools. Okay, that's helpful. And then a question that says, if we need to talk to Fabiana, do we make an appointment to speak over the phone or do we just email you? You don't need appointment. I'm available <laughs> all the time. I am in the school 7.30 to 4.00. Uh, currently, I'm working three days per week in the school and remotely from home. So I will be in the school Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. You don't need an appointment. You can go to the main office. You can ask for me, and then I will make sure that I meet with you. Great. I think there's a follow-up question here about the transcripts, and I think I can answer it. So. Um, I think the way Fabiana described it is if you can get the transcripts faxed to you, 
and put them in your packet, then that will work out just fine rather than relying on the school to then send them and them getting lost in that kind of shuffle. So I think the recommendation would be that the school faxes them to you, you print them or you get the printed copy and then you, you include that in your application to the admissions office. I think we have maybe one time for one more question. And I think it is, I submitted an application last month um, when will we find out um, if we're accepted and do I need to update it at some point during this school year? Okay, so that's a question that I need to know the grade level. I need to know if the application was processed. So for that question, I will say send an email. The website is there. It's admissions at pky.ufl.edu. And please write your question with the name of the child, the current grade level, Give me little background information and I will locate the application, give you the status, and I can tell you also approximately when we're going to be sending those invitations. Great. Oh, one last question. It says, we can have schools email facts to us, yes, the family, and print and submit on paper as part of the application. Yes, that is absolutely accurate. Thanks for the clarification. Definitely, that's possible. So with that, we're right about on time. Um, we thank you all for joining us tonight. We hope that uh, the session has been uh, helpful um, in terms of the process um, and then it, the applications process. And hopefully it gave you a little bit uh, of a better understanding of uh, what PK Young looks and feels like. Um, last minute question, if you just got on the meeting, um, we will post this webinar online and it will be found on our admissions page on the web under about and admissions. Uh, so you'll be able to view this entire presentation uh, on the website in the next couple of days. Thank you, everybody. Uh, we really appreciate you. And um, we look forward to seeing your applications at PK Young. Good night, everybody.